to our humble abode. In April we started on the construction of our double O Pindarvis and Penware layout in our loft and I was soon faced with the job of fitting some 30 plus seep point solenoids onto the baseboards. I had previously spent some time soldering all the wires to them for solenoid and fog switching so there were six wires hanging off of each solenoid. I had everything prepared for the installations, with all the holes drilled through the baseboard for the actuating arms to engage with the point operating me mechanisms. So I came to fit the first solenoid, and oh what a circus! The first hurdle to overcome was how to keep the point centred on the top of the baseboard while I was underneath trying to find that little hole to poke the actuator wire through. Luckily I remembered that somebody on YouTube had said that the 16 by 0.2 wire that I was using was just the right size to put between the point blades and the fixed rails to the centre of the mechanism. So first problem solved. The second problem was a bit trickier. How do I keep the solenoid in position once I had got the wire through the hole? My solution to that one was to use double sided tape to stick it under the baseboard. The problem with that solution was that the weight of the wires tended to pull the solenoid off, so a quick application of the fixing screws was required. The third problem was the most difficult to cement. How could I ensure that the solenoid was at right angles to the track above for the correct function of the assembly? My solution to this was to just eyeball it. Not very scientific, I admit, but I eventually got there. All in all, with a fair bit of a struggle and a few curses under my breath, I finally had my first point solenoid fitted, but I thought that it must be an easier and better way of doing this. Once again I turned to YouTube and caught Rob McCrane's video about fitting the torches motors to his new Farland layout. Two things really caught my eye. First the illumination of the hole from underneath and second the clamping of the actuator wire once it was through the mechanism. So now I had a simple method for finding the hole and for holding the solenoid in place thus freeing me up to get underneath and screw it into position. However the alignment with the track above was still a problem. My thoughts then turned to a jig that would enable me to drill a couple of pilot holes through from the top of the baseboard that could then be picked up from underneath when putting in the fixing screws. As there did not appear to be anything available on the market, I decided to quickly knock one up myself. I decided that what I needed was a jig that replicated the shape and size of the seep mounting plate with the two mounting holes in the correct orientation when seen from above. First of all, I made the plate shape from 3mm Depron sandwiched between two pieces of 20,000 styrene. It's just what I had at the memory at the time.
drilled a small hole in the centre and then pushed her over the actuating wire of one of the solenoids so that it sat on the upper surface. the edges with the plate and marked the positions of the two mounting holes from underneath. I then removed the jig from the solenoid and drilled at the mounting holes with a 2mm drill. The final step was to push a cut off piece of actuating wire through the central hole and super glue it into position. the jig, I centered the point with a couple pieces of 16 by 0.2 wire. The pin of the jig through the hole in the point mechanism, align it so that it's at right angles to the rails, and then drill through the two pilot holes with the screws. Remove the jig 
illuminate the hole from underneath and engage the solenoid actuated wire with the point mechanism. Then hold it in place by wrapping a bit of masking tape around the wire. I am now free to get underneath the layout and fit the two mounting screws into the pilot holes, knowing that everything is correctly lined up. Fitting seep solenoid actuators is now a piece of cake and is definitely done within a couple of minutes and they are all perfectly lined up. I'm surprised that none of the tooling companies out there have not come up with this solution. They could be made of brass or aluminium or even a hard plastic for durability and would be a boon to all purchasers of seep solenoids or similar. Anyway, mine works just fine and fitting point solenoids is no longer a chore. Well, I hope that some of you have found this helpful. I look forward to bringing you all an update on my progress with the Pindarvis and Pimware soon. So, look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now. Yeah.